thank you for joining me for Create a Life You Love. Okay, so I don't know why the live chat isn't on. Hmm. Okay, that's okay. So today's episode is going to be all about why are we here? What are we doing here? What is our purpose here? And for each of us, it's important to know that we have several different purposes. Um, we have love purpose, we have career and profession purpose, we have purpose with family and friends, but we want to know really what's the main, why, why are we here? So today in this episode of Create a Life You Love, I want to talk about why we came down here. I don't like to say down, but why, why we incarnated here on this planet, okay? So I'm going to get a little bit comfortable. You do the same thing. And here we go. So one of the main things that I want to say about why we're here, and it, it's going to sound so basic when I first say this, but it's to create, to create and co-create, to have this life that's magnificent, beyond your wildest dreams. Now, what sparked this show is I was uh, shopping with a friend this weekend and somebody um, said to me, um, everybody's so, uh, I can't remember the way this person said it to me, but they made a comment about people being so consumed with what they want. And I right away corrected this person. It's, it, it's, and let me go a little bit back and forth on this. We are here and we, we came here specifically at this time in this world to help this world be abundant. And I'm going to channel a lot of this. I'm going to channel as much of this as possible. And my, my name is Tony Green. I'm a psychic medium. Let me do my intros before I get full on in. Okay, this is Create a Life You Love. It is airing on WSCS. So at the 30 minute mark, I will say goodbye to WSCS. If you are watching on WSCS and this show goes over 30 minutes and you want to... Um, watch the rest of the show you can go to youtube to my youtube station channel whatever it's called and watch the rest of the show there okay if you are watching on um if you are watching on youtube i was gonna say blog talk because i do my other show through blog talk and the places, I was going to say you can watch me live on YouTube. I want to thank Rude Rangers and Rudy. I'm so excited. We are starting this amazing new adventure together. That is going to be phenomenal. So um, Root Rangers has live streams on Amazon with Amazon Fire Stick, Roku, and Apple TV. I guess, guess what? Soon, it's 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 a little surreal to me, but soon my shows will be live streaming through them. So I'm really humbled and honored and so excited about that. Um, I'm going to do it real quick. This is my book, What If? A Transformational Journey. Now, I have a total of seven books that are available on Amazon, and you can go to my author page, uh, Tony Green. Um, or T T Tony Green with T-O-N-I-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Um, but these are three of my books. And these, these two have poems and messages that I've channeled. But this is a transformational journey. And the idea behind this book is that it opens your mind to new possibilities. So if, you, if I open, uh, oh, this is a good one. And it's so, this, this book is so in alignment with manifesting your life and using the, what, what everybody calls the law of attraction to create the world that you want. Okay. And, and I, 
this is one thing that I'm really, the world is not out here. It is, but the world starts inside of you. Whatever you see or have inside of you, that in, in your mind, that is what you see in the world. Okay. So some people never leave um, their city. And that is what this whole world it, that exists is to them. They can't, they don't have the experiential knowing of other locations and, and how things are maybe on TV, but TV is so not real, right? TV is not real. It's, it's TV. It's not something that they would perceive as real. So when you, um, Oh my gosh, I just, <laughs> it just went, phew, <laughs> done. <laughs> um, so the, what's inside of us, what's in our brain, what we experience and what we want is, um, and where we are and what we have experienced leads us to what we can experience and what's available for us, okay? So this book is designed to help you transform on this journey that you're experiencing. So the page that I just flipped open to says, what if everything starts first in you and then comes true? So meaning, and you can give this, this is the beautiful thing about this book. The first time you go through it, this statement will mean one thing. The, and then there is space to uh, write out what you feel that that means to you. I always tell everybody the first time you go through this, use a separate notebook because by the second or third time you answer these questions, you're going to have such completely different answers. Okay. So back to this one, what if everything um, starts first in you and then comes true? Meaning like my meaning when I was channeling this and whatever your meaning is for it is not wrong. Okay. But meaning what if first you have to have the perception of it? What if first you have to have the idea, the conceptual, it, it, it's conceived in you and then comes out like kind of like a woman birthing a baby. It starts inside of you and then it, it comes out as this, um, well, with the case of a baby, like a baby, but if, if it's an idea, it has to first start in you. And so, okay, this weekend, back to where this, the idea for this show started. <laughs> I think I did all of the things I needed to say for the show. And now I can get into the show. Why are we here to create and co-create? Now, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about how and why we do this. But first, I want to really go back to this person coming up to me and making a comment about um, what people want and, and being focused on it. And my response is, yes, more of that, please. More of that, please. That shouldn't consume us. And of course, every single person has a spiritual side. And that spiritual side uh, it can, can help you create. OK, we didn't come down here or we didn't come to this plane or planet to be in a space of lack or fear. It's quite the opposite. It's the exact opposite. We came here at this time to help this planet grow and prosper, become abundant. The way the planet becomes more abundant and whatever abundance means to you is by its participants being abundant. Now, a participant can obviously be a person, you and I. It can be the animals. It can be the trees and the plants. This is a whole ecosystem that is participating together to create an abundant existence for all that are here. Make no mistake. 
We were not put here to be in a destitute situation. Okay. We were put here to create what we feel deep inside of us. And we all have a knowing or an idea of that. When we think about it, we're like, oh, like we get that feeling. It wakes us up. It makes us happy. Sometimes it's love with another person. Sometimes it's um, a piece of art. And it doesn't have to be an expensive piece of art. It's just something you look at it and makes your eyes go, oh my gosh, there's just something about it that brings something inside of you, in your heart. It touches you, okay? There's like, I I am such a corny person. Like sometimes I'll see a plant. Like I have plants all over my house and I think sometimes I want more plants, but I really don't have space. And I'm not even an earth sign. I'm an air sign, but I have so many plants on my house. And sometimes I think, where am I going to put this if I get it? Is it fair to the plant if I get another plant? Because there's really no more window space. There's no place else I can hang them. There's no place like people were complaining that would come to my house because I literally had a plant hanging in front of the window in my bathroom and I didn't think it through quite clearly, but it's a philodendron. And like the the leaves had grown down so far that when you would sit on my toilet, it was like the plant was all in your head. Finally, I moved it. Okay, this is what I think is funny. I'm such a quirky person. I find humor in that. But um, but like people were like, could you move this so I can go to the bathroom? I'm like, no, let the plant touch you. Anyway, okay, so whatever brings us joy, what feeds our soul. And for each person, that's completely different, okay? So if we're here to create and co-create, I want to start with like, like there's a song, it's a it's an older, um, I want to call it rap song from the, uh, maybe it's a, C, a whole CD um, called Cradle to the Grave. So I kind of want to go Cradle to the Grave, but I'm going to go before cradle and past grave. So before we come in, yep, before we even come in, we already have a knowing or an idea of what we want in this world. And when we get here, we take that knowing with us and then we start creating from that. Okay, we start really manifesting what we want. And we do that through our thoughts and through our feelings. And as we create through our thoughts and our feelings, our world expands, our personal world expands, it grows. We start to see what we want show up, what we have um, get bigger and better. When we are in a place of fear, that starts to shrink it. It starts to stop it things start coming in in a slower pace and sometimes it will halt our creation altogether. So when I say we are here to create and co-create, I cannot be more serious than that, okay? And make no mistake, make absolutely no mistake, each and every day you are creating. You are creating with every thought. Now, not every thought you have gets created. But every thought that you have is the possibility for creation. Okay? So if you're in a really unhappy, sad place, and you're thinking it's just going to be like this forever, you know, your next hour is going to be like that unless you turn it around unless you bring that around. Once you bring that around, it's going to be completely different. You're going to be in that space where things get better, bigger, brighter, okay? It's not always easy to turn things around once you're in a space of fear or loss or lack. And we all, we all suffer loss and lack. Now, let's go back to um, creating and co-creating and what 
inspired me to do this show. The whole idea of this person saying to me that it bothered them, that it, it, it that people were creating, that they wanted things. I right away said, no, 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 no. But that's why we're here. We are here to create, and it doesn't only mean monetary things. It means everything. But I'm going to tell you, if you are closed off to the ability or the possibility of creating on a physical level, financial stuff level, you are closed off to creating on every level. And let me expand on that just a little bit. If you feel like there should be limitations in any area of your life for anything, for any reason, you are not creating the full life you could have. If you feel like there should only be so much money each person should ever be allowed to have, that's a limiting thought, a limiting belief. And you know what? It's none of your freaking business how much money anybody else has. Focus on your own pockets. Focus on where you are. Okay? Never think anybody has too much of anything for any reason. If you won the lottery, like right now, I think the mega millions is at 340 million. If you won that, that's your business and it's nobody else's business to say that's too much for you to have. That's That was ordained. That was blessed to you. That was given. Whether you worked for it, won it, inherited it, it doesn't matter. It was ordained for you. And it's nobody else's business. And, and what anybody else thinks of that is none of your business. So we have to get in this place where we stop thinking that people who have any amount of money are greedy. That where we think people who have any amount of anything is, is an act of greed. We have to be in that space where we are not caring what people are creating for themselves or why or how they're creating it. Okay, that first and foremost, you wouldn't tell somebody and I say this all the time, you're taking too much breath or air. You're being greedy. You would never do that. You're drinking too much water. You're being greedy. We would never do that. It's the same thing. This we were put here to expand and grow not only ourselves, but our whole world. So. As I started to explain this to this person, or try to explain it to this person, listen, we were put here to create and co-create. We were put here with the idea and the knowing that expansion is the goal. Expansion is the destiny for ourselves and for others. So if you are in that place of creation, you are going to start to have ideas for new products coming in. You're going to have ideas for new careers and businesses come in. You're going to have epiphany moments of how you can uh, help people have a better quality of life, whether it's through a product or a way of living. Because when you're in that space of creation, that's exactly what happens. That's exactly where you go. Okay. As children at Christmas, like when we're really little, and if you believed in Santa Claus and you, you um, experienced Christmas like that or Hanukkah and you experienced um, Hanukkah with gifts, um, we didn't say we never had the thought as a child that it was wrong to ask for certain gifts during the holidays, right? Because it was coming from Santa or, you know, Hanukkah. It was expected. But then once we didn't know, once we knew that there was no Santa Claus, it changed everything, right? It changes everything. We're like, oh, wait, there's no Santa Claus. Am I going to get everything I want? 
can I put everything on my list now? Like it changed our perspective on how to create. But as children, when we did believe in, in Santa Claus, like I have a little um, seven-year-old niece who is so adorable. And we were talking, it's like right now, May, and she's like, oh, I want these, but but I'm going to put them on my list for Santa Claus because Santa Claus will bring you things. Like she just has that knowing and that's creating. That's how we create. So maybe there's no Santa Claus, but there is a universe that is working double time to create this earth to be like heaven. I, I'm not, I can't even, I can't even be more clear about that. The idea wasn't to come here and suffer. The idea was to come here and make this existence as close to that existence, that heavenly existence as we could. By bringing our creative abilities here. Mm -hmm. And we all create every single day. By bringing our creative abilities here and creating with a physical form. But we all get caught up in beliefs and programs that come from other people. And we don't allow ourselves to expand and create in the way that we would if we didn't give a happy hoo-hoo what anybody else thought about us. If we didn't give a, a, a thought to how other people say we're supposed to make money or how much money we're supposed to make from this career. I'm going to, there are people who are in the computer industry that are on a salary. And then there are people in the computer industry that go off on their own and they make, you know, maybe six figure businesses, uh, six figure incomes. And then there are people in the computer industry like uh, that Steve Jobs, who recreate the whole mother loving ship for humanity. And it's abundance, it's pure abundance. Now, is anybody gonna say Steve Jobs was wrong for creating Mac? God, I hope not. I would hope not. He did that for himself, but he did it for, human, for, for, for everybody. And everybody is, some people are um, absolutely uh, Apple people and they enjoy the product and it's kind of a cult in some ways and they love it. So the only limitation is the one we put on ourselves, that, that, that prison in our mind that says, okay, I'm going to be in the computer industry, for example, and I'm going to uh, get a job that pays me by the hour or by the week or by the year. Or I'm going to start my own company or I'm going to revolutionize it. Right. And I'm going to tell you something that's with every single industry. You can be a teacher and you can decide I'm going to work for, for uh, a school and I'm going to get paid this much and have these benefits. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to create, you create that. But then there are people that say, I'm, I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to go off on my own and I'm going to start a tutoring and my, my, my own thing, okay? And do tutoring and do this and do that. And then there are people who revolutionize teaching by creating apps and creating um, YouTube stations and just take it that next level. It's limitless. So are you the let's be safe and create this safety net? this guarantee are you the next level of let's create this business or are you the 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 limitless level of i'm gonna put this to the world whoever in the world wants this they get to have it i'm putting this out to the world i'm putting it out there now okay which where do you fall or someplace in between it doesn't matter now if you are in a place where you're doing that, I'm I'm in this place where I'm creating an hourly salary and I'm not happy with my hourly salary, you need to bump that up. I deserve better. I am better. I deserve better. 
And, and if you need to get a little training or whatever it is, get it. Get YouTube, YouTube offers training in everything. I mean, there's nothing you can't learn from YouTube. There's everything. How do I say that? Like, how's that statement go? Anything you want to learn is on YouTube. Okay. I'm just serious. And they have videos. They will show you. I mean, you wouldn't believe some of the videos I've seen on YouTube. <laughs> shockingly. And I'm shockingly. So, but the point is, here's the point. You can make it limitless. No matter where you are right now, you can make it limitless. You just have to open your mind to the possibility that that exists for you. It's not always for the other per people or person. It's for all of us. We're all brought in with the idea and the knowing that we can create and co-create in a boundless way. There are no, limitless. There, there are the only limits are in our mind, uh, and sometimes that comes from childhood. Sometimes it comes from from other things growing up. But the only limit is what's in your mind. Okay. Now let me let me go on one other like the medical field. Okay. You can be in the medical field and be a nurse, let's just say a nurse, and you can work like in a hospital and get paid so much per hour per day. Then you can decide you're going to branch out and you're going to do um, home health care. Um, and then, then you make more and you, you broaden your, or you can decide you're going to do, uh, open your own home health care place. Now, I know women who are nurses that have branched out to aesthetics. And I know of one woman personally who has not only branched out and she started as a nurse, which is good. She started her own clinic doing aesthetics, but then she created her own class on how to do aesthetics differently than they were doing them, doing fillers and Botox differently than they were doing them. And turned it into a place where all other nurses come to her to learn. And she's actually teaching doctors how to do this now. Be limitless. Open your mind to whatever they bring to you. They being heaven, um, angels, guides, whatever you want to call them. Because we were not put here to suffer. We were not he put here to be in this rut. We were put here to be limitless beings to create and co-create not only for ourselves, but for others to co create and co-create and expand this world. It's expand the thinking of this world. It's to have this expansion throughout and not only for ourselves, but there are people watching. We may never know who's watching that will see that and, and go, that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to grow from there. Thank you for joining me. I will be back next week. Until then, have an absolutely amazing rest of the week.